Hey guys, Introspection here, and I wanted to discuss something you likely already heard about. Recently, somebody won $3 million from a video game tournament, and yes, I am aware that the rest of the internet has already made their videos since weeks ago, but I really wanted to take my time in thinking about this one, because I think there's a lot of good points that can come out of this story, which means this video is probably going to be just a tad bit longer than my usual content, so buckle down. Now, I'm going to go over the general story just to make sure that we're all on the same page and anybody who hasn't heard of the story, or the video game in particular, is more or less up to date. Fortnite's a game where 100 people are thrown in and they battle on to just one person's left. Recently, there was a tournament held for this game where, like I said, the winner got $3 million. The winner of this $3 million is somebody going by the name of Kyle Yearsdorf. I'm pretty sure I said it right. I've been trying for the past 50 takes to say it right. If I still said it wrong, Kyle, I'm really sorry, even though I'm pretty sure you will never, ever, ever, ever see this video. But on the off chance you do, I'm just going to use Kyle from here on in just to avoid butchering your name. Anyways, Kyle, like I said, won $3 million, and this one's really interesting. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of the game, nothing really against it. I've tried it, wasn't a big fan of it, who knows that may change sometime in the future, but as it stands now, just not a huge fan. But this story specifically still is rather of an oddity or unusual at this point. And what I mean is, generally speaking, when there's a tournament for video games involving a large sum of money, maybe not quite three million dollars large, but still very, very significant, almost no one cares. Generally only the people who do care are not only the gamers interested in that game, but the gamers who are interested in the game and actually enjoy watching other people play that game. I mean, personally, I'm not even up to date on the majority of the tournaments because it's just not something I enjoy watching. I'm not a big fan of watching other people play games. That's just me. But this one made its rounds through all of the media outlets. It, in, in a lot of cases, this game in tournament was more popular than a lot of the other sporting tournaments that we're usually used to seeing on these kinds of things. And to my knowledge, this is among the first time a video game tournament has become this popular. For me, it's the first time. There might be a couple here and there that I'm just not aware of, but it's definitely among the first time a video game tournament has hit this level of popularity. And because of this, I theorize, and we're actually going to have to move through history to see if I'm right or wrong about this, but I theorize this could mark one of the major points where tournaments for video games start to garner as much popularity as tournaments for sports. Also something I'm just not personally interested, that's just me. In any case, I think there's a few points that I can draw out of the story and I want to comb through them. The first of which, is video gaming a viable career option? Well, I think quite possibly. Maybe not definitely, but quite possibly. I mean, here we saw that Kyle won $3 million out of a tournament, and like I said before, there are plenty of tournaments you're probably not aware of simply because they're not quite as popular, but you can still get large sums of money from those tournaments. Maybe not quite $3 million, but still pretty significant. On top of that, there are plenty of other gamers that don't even make their money that way. A lot of gamers will do what's called live streaming, which is what when they're recording and streaming directly to the internet in real time as they're playing the game. And that's another way that people will get a lot of money because people will pay to or, or people will pay to put advertisements or be advertising that specific person, and that's how they make a lot of money. And believe it or not, there are people not only making livings off of these methods, but people who are, are making more than an average working adult. Now there's a good chance that you're looking at this and you're going to call me crazy. And to be totally honest with you, that's understandable. Maybe not what you expected to hear, but yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you think about it, there's no really established video game league. I mean, yes, there are established video game leagues in the gaming world, but none that are established within society the same way that FIFA or the UFC are. Everybody knows about those. But if you ask somebody about a video game league, there's a good chance they're not going to know what you're talking about unless they themselves are somebody who keeps up with video game tournaments. But in other cases, such as UFC or FIFA, they're going to know those organizations regardless of, as to whether they show any interest in those sports. And on top of that, there's no real established way to become a professional gamer. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are several things that you can do and paths that you can take to become a professional gamer, 
but there's no real established system for it. When it comes to other sports, then yeah, there's probably a system that you can follow to become a professional in said sport. Perhaps you need to get a scout to come and view your games and convince them that you need to go, or perhaps you need to go through a school first. Perhaps there is some sort of audition that you need to attend to and then you have to get picked that way. Whatever the case may be, there's some established system to go through and then you can say yes, what you need to do is you need to train for this long and then you need to go do this, this, and this. You can't really do that with gaming because we really don't have an established system for that yet. So given all this, it's pretty understandable if you're thinking that anybody saying that gaming can actually become a professional career might be a little bit too hopeful or crazy. And I'm not necessarily saying that you should drop everything and focus all of your future plans around the potential of becoming a professional gamer, specifically because gaming and professional gaming is still kind of developing, we're still developing the idea of a professional gamer, but what I am saying is that at some point gaming can become a professional career option and it might not be too far ahead in the future. So here's what I'll do. Let's go and go ahead and work through what needs to happen to make professional gaming a legitimate career and then we'll see if I can change a few minds. So the main concern I'm guessing for parents anyways is where does the money gonna come from? I want my child to be able to support him or herself in the future. How are they going to get the money to do that? Well, let's think about this one. Where do sports people get their money? Well, it generally comes from one of two places. And really, when you have a really rich athlete, it's going to come from one more so than the other. Almost completely dominantly one more so than the other. The first is the tournament winners. Just like Kyle, they'll go compete in the tournament, they'll get the win, they'll get the money in the tournament offered, and that's how they make it. Now, of course, the more popular the game is, the more people want to watch, the more people want to watch it, the more you're going to probably get from prize winnings. There's going to be other things to be considered in there when determining how much a tournament's going to pay you, but it's going to be one of the main things. But when it comes to big shot athletes who are really, really rich, they generally don't rely on tournament winnings. What they rely is the other reason, which is advertisements paying them. See, the more popular you are, the more eyes are going to be on you. The more eyes that are going to be on you, the more advertisers will pay you that you're getting their product in front of more eyes. The less popular you are, the less advertisements will pay you because there are less eyes on you. So that's generally the main place where sports people or athletes will get the majority of their money. So then we have to think to ourselves, okay, can this happen to gaming? Well, like I said before, I believe so, and this is the reason why. Most people don't realize this because gaming hasn't really gotten ground in society like other things have, but there are a lot of tournaments which people will watch continuously, and sometimes religiously, to see how it turns out. And of course, as it stands now, it's not quite as popular as the other sports, but keep in mind that it just continues to grow and grow. And if all the kids are currently interested in video games who will grow up to be adults, then they're going to want to spend time and money watching whoever is playing the game so long as they continue with that interest. And like I said before, the reason Kyle was able to get so much money and the reason other people were willing to pay him so much money and spend so much on the organization and the tournament and all of this is because they knew they were going to make a lot more money through actually doing it. That's why Kyle got so much money. And Frank, guessing by how much I'm assuming they made, he probably should have gotten more, but that's besides the point. So it's a completely doable thing for gamers to get money because as time goes on, gaming becomes more, po more popular, the more popular it becomes, the more people have eyes on them. The more people have eyes on them, the more advertisers want to pay that person to continue doing professional gaming. So in terms of monetary, it's completely feasible that we will live in a future that people will regularly make money from professional gaming. Now, the other thing I commonly hear from people generally, not even just specifically parents, isn't it just button mashing? Is that really a thing that people should attempt to pursue and devote time and effort into? And I think that's a valid question. I know that a lot of gamers get a fair bit steamed whenever they hear this question, but when you think about it, it's pretty understandable. I mean, when you're just watching somebody play a game, that's all it looks like. When you don't have any more information than just seeing somebody play the game, it really just looks like mashing buttons. I mean, me and every other gamer knows that that's not all it is, but to anybody 
who's just watching and doesn't understand the game, it's perfectly understandable that all they see is button mashing. So hopefully I'll be able to give you an example that will give you a better idea as to how complex games can become. Let's take for instance hockey. Now we know that to anybody who doesn't know anything about hockey, it's really just going to look like a bunch of guys slamming into each other and trying to get the puck into one area or the other, right? Well, let's take just the simple act of being slammed into. Most people will think, okay, all you have to do is slam into them back as hard as you can and hopefully you won't fall over like a ton of bricks, right? Well, believe it or not, there's a fair bit more to it than that. For instance, when somebody slams into you on an ice skating ring, there's an actual stance you can take so that when they slam into you with all their weight, you are more stable. It is physically harder to knock you over that way so that you don't fall over and you can continue to play. Or right, let's say just them picking up speed. Most people will think, oh yeah, it's just building up muscle in your legs and back and then you will be able to go fast pretty easy, well not easy, but and that is a large part of it. But that's not all there is to it. For instance, when you're looking at an ice skate, there's actually three parts of the blade. Most people only think they're one, which is understandable if you're not that into hockey. But if you are, you know that there's going to be three portions of the blade. And what you're trying to do will depend on which side of the blade you want to be on, whether it's the middle, inside, or outside. For instance, you need to push off a very specific side if you want to maximize your speed and efficiency in attempting to get across the ring. So there's a lot of complexities into it, but if anybody who doesn't know about those complexities is watching it, it really just looks like people slamming into each other, even though it's not. So you might be thinking, okay, that's fair, but just because this is what happens in hockey, that doesn't mean that's what happens in video games, that video games can still just be mindless m button mashing. And that's understandable. So how about I give you a more specific example? Take fighting games, for instance. When a character executes a move, it actually takes a certain amount of frames. If you don't know what frames are, basically, you know how in TV uh, the moving image is just a bunch of really fast moving pictures? Well, when you take a second of a video and you count how many pictures are in that one second, that's a frame. So when there are 30 pictures within that one second, that is 30 frames per second. And you get the rest. 60 frames six is 6 pictures per second, so on and so forth. Now when a fighter executes a move, gamers will actually count the amount of frames that it takes for them to execute, not, not physically, they have programs that will count it for them. But this is important in fights because when two characters are executing a move at the same time, the character who has less frames to execute that move than the other character is going to be the one who hits the other character first. So for instance, if I have a move that takes 25 frames to pull off and the other character has a move that takes 30 frames to pull off, then in that case the character with 25 frames will end up hitting them first. And this is important to know because each character will have a variety of movesets, not just one or two, most of the time anyways. Which would mean that in a situation, for instance, if we're both together and we're both executing the same move, I'm going to want to execute a move that's faster than his, or perhaps I'm further away, so this gives me more time to execute another move that even though it takes more frames, will do more damage. Or perhaps the landing of when a character lands gives me enough time that even though it takes a lot of frames to execute, I can still time it right so that it still lands on the character at the time I wanted to do so. And this is just one of the many complexities that come with specifically fighting games. And then there are other games, perhaps like FPS games, with different kinds of characters. So because of this, gamers are constantly thinking about, okay, if we combine this gravity attack with this multi-shot attack, then we can do that so that we can capture everybody and take them out all at once. And of course, all of this, believe it or not, is just the surface level of how complex these games can get. Even games that look simple on the surface, and they're made to look simple so that it's attracted to a larger audience, are generally way more complicated. And it's only the people who understand these complexities and spend time practicing. Like they have to practice executing each technique, each style. They have to practice, they have to more or less memorize all of the movesets of the characters so that they know which movesets are faster than the other ones and how they can better counter other characters. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on as to how complex these games can get. So hopefully I've been able to change your mind on a few things so far. Now I'm going to switch gears here quite a bit. An unfortunate effect that I've seen of Kyle's amazing success 
is that there seems to be a lot of gamers. It tends to favor the younger gamers, but quite a few older gamers as well, who will say, Oh, I can play Fortnite and disregard all of my responsibilities. I'm pretty good at the game. I can beat all of my friends. I can do this easy peasies, right? Well, unfortunately, this kind of mentality seems to be affecting a few gamers in a fairly negative way and just giving gamers in general a pretty bad view. Now, like I said before, becoming a professional gamer is a completely plausible thing that's well within the realm of possibility. And if that's your dream, I certainly encourage you to go for it. But there is a lot of things that people would try to get away with with this kind of argument or will attempt to say, oh, well, I shouldn't do this because I want to do this. So I'm going to go over all of the individual points and attempt to convince you otherwise. The first point is gamers will say, oh, I shouldn't go to school because I'm going to be a professional gamer anyways and I won't need that. And all it's doing is taking away time from gaming, right? So a few things about that. That's really not a good idea because, again, you can become a professional gamer, but it's not really an established thing at the moment. It's still it's in, in its development stages. We're still trying to figure out what is and isn't a professional gamer and, and establishing a career path for that. So that being said, who knows where gaming is actually going to go? If for all we know, there could be another gaming depression like there was a couple years back where gaming's out for 10 years and you won't be able to do anything until those 10 years are up. Maybe the game that you're interested in doesn't, doesn't blow up like you do and, and you can't become a gamer that way. Maybe you just continue on, you, grow, you continue to grow, and maybe you just genuinely don't like gaming. In which case, you will have to catch up because you have not been in school. And just generally speaking, having a backup education is not a bad idea. If we fast forward in the future and you never use it, so what? You, you don't have an education. You have the education even if you don't use it. It's better to have it and never use it than discover that you would actually have wanted or needed the education and not have it, right? And even just for athletes in general, they are encouraged to have an education because nobody knows what's going to happen in their sports either. Maybe their sport loses popularity. Heck, maybe gaming even takes away the popularity of the sport now that I think about it. Maybe they get injured. Maybe they just don't want to play the sport anymore and want to do something else with their lives. All that is fine. And again, having a backup for those people doesn't mean me telling you that they're going to fail. It just means having a backup is never a bad idea. And again, the fact that gaming isn't fully developed, if your parents are telling you to go to school, that's probably just because they want to make sure that if the gaming thing doesn't develop the way you're expecting or you lose interest in it, you have something else that you would like to pursue. You have the capability of going into another career so that the, either way, regardless as to whether you go into gaming or into school, you are not school, you will have already done school, but either gaming or another career, you will still continue on to do something where you can support yourself. Now the next thing I see a lot of these gamers doing is using it as an argument not to do their responsibilities. Now I've done a video on people being respectful of the fact that you can't pause an online game. I'll go ahead and leave that down in the description below. But that doesn't mean that if you have responsibilities you were supposed to do beforehand and you didn't do them, that you that the person doesn't have any right to cut you off in the middle of a video game. Now, for instance, if somebody said, or if it were your responsibility to take out the trash, and you told said person that I will take out the trash before I start gaming, and you don't, and you're on an online game, I, like, I'm, I'm sorry, you got you got to take out the trash. You should have taken it out before. It's your responsibility. Now, on the other hand, if no prior commitment was made and something like taking out the trash can wait until the tournament is over, then yes, I, I think it'd be nice for other people to be respectful of the fact that they can't pause the game. Obviously, if you can pause the game, then you should pause the game and continue on to do the trash. But if you can't, like an online game, then it's pretty nice if somebody's respectful. But if there was prior responsibilities you were supposed to do before you start the game and they interrupt you, I don't really think I can help you because you 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 dropped the ball. You didn't do your responsibilities. 
And just finally, in general, another thing that I see is gamers will say stuff like, "Well, I can't do anything else other than these things. Otherwise, it will take too much time away from gaming, and it will be impossible for me to actually become a gamer." And to that, I say, "Look, I, I really think you're not trying hard enough if that's really the case." And what I mean by that is when you are truly passionate about something. Passionate in the same way that a lot of gamers claim to be passionate about gaming, you are willing to endure a ton of hardship. You are willing to endure a ton of obstacles simply because you are determined to achieve your dream. Take, for instance, Pele. Pele is a very famous football player. But you know what? When he was little, he was so poor they couldn't even afford a soccer ball for him. So you know what he did? He improvised. He used a grapefruit because he was that determined. When Beethoven lost his hearing, he was still determined to make music. So he continued to find ways around it. Manny Pacquiao would get up at 4 a.m. in the morning because he was that passionate about achieving his dream. And this is the kind of passion you need to have if you truly claim that you want to become a professional gamer. Now, if you're a casual gamer, don't worry. You don't have to do any of this. You're just enjoying the game. That's perfectly fine. But if you're somebody who claims to want to be a professional gamer, somebody who wants to make this into a career, and you want to be somebody of magnificent stature in the gaming world as a professional gamer, it's going to take this kind of dedication. You're going to have to be willing to take this kind of punishment if you want to achieve your dream. As a high-level professional gamer in the future, so if you can honestly say to yourself, "I want to become a professional gamer. That is my dream. That is my passion." Then, in comparison to what you're going to have to be willing to do, the basic responsibilities you might be burdened with is really nothing. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that anybody should intentionally try to prevent you from achieving your dream. But what I am saying is that you need to be responsible for yourself, and that having this dream doesn't mean that you shouldn't take care of your own responsibilities. Well, guys, it's that time. It's the end of the video. I told you guys it was going to be a fair bit longer than my usual content, but like I said, I had a lot to think about, and I really thought it should be discussed. If you disagree with me on any of this. That's quite all right, and of course, I encourage you to leave it down in the comment section below. Obviously, I can't stop you from being disrespectful, but just keep in mind, being respectful when disagreeing with me will probably yield a more productive conversation. So, if you do have any points you want to disagree with me, go ahead and leave them down in the comment comment section below. So long as you're respectful, I think we can have a very productive conversation. I also want to say congratulations to Kyle, even though I'm like 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999